this unit is interesting because it really comes back full circle to grade nine. I've mentioned that a few other times, but um, we're going to do, especially over the today and tomorrow, look at a lot of stuff, which is exactly what you would have done in grade nine. I'm teaching a grade nine class right now, and they're just finishing up the unit that has some of the exact same kinds of questions that we are going to talk about here, but we're going to be doing it with different notation using vector notation and some other kinds of notation. In fact, we're going to cover four different types of notation over the next couple of days. Primarily, we're looking at two of them today. One of them's review. It's the same old one that you've seen before. And then um, tomorrow, we'll add on sort of a fourth way that we can represent lines. And we're going to, so we're going to look at lines for a couple of days, equations of lines, and then we look at equations of planes, which is obviously new. But it's still, a lot of it is similar thinking and similar kinds of questions to what you had in grade nine. It's pretty interesting. Um, Again, I've said this a few times, it's notation heavy. So there's a lot of new notation and you really need to nail that. And the earlier you can do that, obviously the better. So to me, that's what you're focusing on over the, these few days is it's all gonna seem really easy because the thinking is like at a, mostly at a grade nine level, but the notation is new and you know notation's not intuitive it's not obvious so you got to get used to it and there's lots of different types and so basically we'll give you some information in one notation and you need to turn it into all the other notations and understand how they're all related you can go from this form to that form from that form to that form if you're given in this form how do you solve this problem if you're given in that form how do you solve that problem all those kinds of things right and this a lot of this comes back to the functions from last year as well or from last semester as well where like you know it's all about properties of in this case just lines so um, what are the important properties of lines maybe the intercepts slope if you're talking about it at the grade nine way uh, points on the line um, that that kind of thing right is is what lines are all about so again getting used to if you're given information in a particular form how do you get the how do you use that form to get the information you need properties of the function whatever it is Does that make sense so if we go back to grade nine, and we've done it a little bit in this course where we found e equations of lines, How, what's the, what, what does a line look like just in Cartesian space? Well, there's sort of three different versions you might look at, y equals mx plus b. m is slope, b is y-intercept, very useful form. There's standard form, and standard form was the one where all of your, like ABC are integers, no fractions, and, and often when we ask for equations of tangent lines or normal to a function at a point, we would ask for it in standard form. So hopefully we'll, we'll see this. This is the one that's review. You've seen this before. So it, it comes up a little bit in the stuff that we're going to do. Um, and to come up with an equation, you would need slope and a point to write the equation. Maybe you would use this formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And in fact, that's a that's an e, that's a form that's like an equation of a line that some people use. Some teachers or some departments will leave a line in that form. So if I gave you negative three over two, and the point was uh, five negative four. The line would be y plus four equals negative three over two x minus five. And you'd actually leave it in that form. Like that is something that some people do. But you could take that form and rearrange it to one of the other forms. But all those forms are it's just like old school using rational numbers, right? Like from back in grade nine or even back in elementary school, these are sort of different forms, but they're all they're all in the same space. Does that make sense? We're actually going to call them scalars from now on because when you're comparing it to a vector equation, this is what you would call the scalar equation. Okay, so whether it's standard form or y equals mx plus b form, it's still all scalar. So that's from grade nine. We needed slope and a point. What about when we're talking in vector space and what if, what if we want to use vectors to represent equations? And why would you want to? Well, because vectors are, is a very powerful way of representing things and you'll get a little taste of that 
in that little extra, extra few days that hopefully we're going to add in um, where you can represent vectors in, in a different way and make the computational math kind of becomes easier in a lot of ways. It's a very eloquent way of solving problems. So that's one of the reasons at least. And uh, so if we are talking about vectors and we're using vectors to think about this stuff, we have to be able to represent the line, a line with vectors, not with like algebraically with coefficients and that kind of thing, right? Not in terms of x and y with coefficients, but in terms of vectors. So it turns out um, it's similar. Any point on the line, but we turn it into a vector and call it the position vector for the line. And we need the direction of the line, which is kind of like slope, but we but that's what we need. So instead of slope and a point, we need still a point, but we're going to turn it into a position vector. So a position vector, which comes from any point on the line, and the direction vector, which is like the direction of the line. So let's take a look at an example. So you can see that it's similar and it seems obvious, but remember, it's not necessarily as easy as you think. So let's graph this line where the slope is one half. And the y-intercept is 4. So I go to 4 and I plot a point. And I go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. Ugh. Don't do that. There we go. There's my line. So I su this is not something we're probably going to do a lot of, but I suppose one of the questions we could ask you, we could give you a graph of a line and say, come up with the vector equation of this line. Right? So these are all the different kinds of things you might be asked to do. That one's not very interesting. It's easy. But what we know is that we need to come up with a position vector and the direction vector. So the position vector can come from any point. So I'll choose um, this point, that's 2, 5. So a point, but you could choose any point on the line. And we often refer to that point as P0 or P0. Uh, so that's 2, 5. Therefore, uh, actually I'll just say this gives us the position vector the position vector 2, 5, and I'll draw that here. So this is the position vector. Think about what that means, position vector, because it is a vector. It's not a point on the line. It's a vector that in standard position starts at the origin and ends at a point on the line, but it's a position vector. Because I can't have a point and a vector like together, you know what I mean? Okay, so that's one of the things we need. The other thing we need is a direction vector, which is easy to get just from looking at it, but in other cases you might have to do a little bit of work or sort of think about how you're going to come up with a direction vector. But for us, what would be a vector that's parallel to our line, starts at the origin? How would you figure that out? Because in standard position, when we represent vectors, their tail is at the origin and their, their tip is at the point that we're going to use. So what would be a vector that's parallel to our line? So in the same direction sort of as our line. Anybody, anybody, anybody? I'm actually asking you this. Daniel? 2-1. So how did you come up with that? 
So thinking about slope, and we've talked about this before, direction, vector, and slope, they're kind of similar ideas. They are not the same, though. So it's not just the slope, but it's the same idea. And we, generally speaking, call the direction vector D. And in this case, it's 2, 1. Whereas the slope of the line was 1 over 2. So they are related. So I've also graphed our direction vector, and I've graphed our position vector. And it's sort of strange when you look at the direction vector and the position vector graphed how they represent a line, because they don't seem to. They seem to be two separate vectors. But the direction vector is parallel to this line, and the position vector ends at a point on the line. Again, it could be any point. And so what does the vector equation of a line look like? What, the, what uh, form does it take? Well, you've got it on your handout below, but here it is. This one is 2, 5 plus t times the direction vector. And t can be anything. t is a scalar. You could put anything in for t. You could make it negative 1 or negative 5 or 0.3 or 100. And what you're going to do is evaluate this starting at this point and then adding some scalar multiple of this you can see how it will take you to all the other points on the line because this is parallel this direction vector is parallel to the line so if I start on the line it'll always take me to everywhere else on the line this point could be any point on the line so you could have different equations that like they could look different but they're all the same equation Generally speaking, we would want it in like a reduced form, but yeah, it could be, yeah. right? So if it was 4 and 2, that would still take me to all the points on the line, just like um, standard form can have, can be fully reduced or not, right? Any other questions or comments? What do you think? Seems easy so far, right? Remember, it's notation, though. It's notation heavy. Really, really, really important to understand the difference between a vector and a line. This is a line. It is not a vector. This is an equation of the line written in terms of vectors. But a vector and a line are two different things. A line exists in a particular space, in a position. Vectors do not. Vectors can be moved around. But lines exist in an actual place that they don't move, right? So keep that in mind and remind yourself of that over the next few days. Line is different from a vector. This is one of the forms, one of the new forms, vector form of the equation. Yes? So for a line that crosses through the origin, you can just express that as t and then the um, direction vector. Yeah, you would probably still write in the zero vector. Because otherwise, it, it may, I think that would be the convention. It wouldn't be to just leave it out, but that's the same idea. And some of the other versions of um, the equations that we're going to look at would have sort of a similar idea to it. And take a look. Um, we generally talk about the direction vector as equaling m1, m2. That must come from have something to do with slope, right? But m1, m2 is a direction vector, generally speaking. And then the position vector. So again, you could think of this as like x, y equals the position vector plus t times the direction vector, where x naught, y naught is a position vector to any known point on the line, any point on the line. m1 and 2 is a direction vector that's parallel to the line. And t is some element of r. Like I said, t can be anything. And that will give us x, y which is another position vector that will go to any unknown or all unknown and known whatever points on the line. right? And that's how we can represent it. So it's got similarities to what we did in the past, kind of thinking about slope and a point. But now it's position vector, direction vector, but very similar. OK, let's take a look at what a, a real example would look like doing some work with this stuff. 
And we're going to graph it just so that we can see what the graph kind of looks like and think about this. But um, often you're not going to be graphing them. You're just going to be finding equations and that kind of thing. So we're given two points. I'm going to, I'm going to plot them. So P is 3, negative 2. So here's P. And Q is negative 1, 5. And we'll draw the line that connects them. So write the vector equation for the line through P and Q. And this is going to use some of the stuff that we have done in the previous unit. So first of all, we can, I mean, it doesn't matter what you start with, but let's start with the position vector. The position vector can be any point on the line, so what do you think we should choose? Zach, what do you think? Sure. Could we have used Q? Yeah, we could, right? So, of course, you can use either point. You choose, and that, this was the same in grade 9, where you got to choose. So I'll choose position vector uh, comes from point P. How are we going to find a direction vector? How are we going to do that? Like, I have the graph so I could count out the slope, but I don't want to do that. I want to be able to calculate this stuff, obviously, if it's not, you know, nice, friendly numbers. So we could do that to find slope, but it's not really... If you're asked to find the direction vector, it would be a little strange to calculate slope and then turn it into a direction vector. I mean, there's a relationship between them, but we want to learn, we want to know how to calculate it in vector notation. And generally speaking, that would be what you would be expected to do. But you're right, you could do something like that. What's the equivalent of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but in vector space, using vectors? No, nobody? Any other ideas? Zach? QP or PQ, right? Find that vector, the vector between P and Q, from P to Q or Q to P, will be a vector. Remember, vectors don't exist in particular places. So even though it comes from P to Q, I can move it to put its tail on the origin, and it's the vector that we want. So our direction vector, let's say PQ, and I think I mentioned this, remember, that finding vectors between two points is actually something you're going to do a fair bit of. And so you're going to be doing it in this unit. And so we need to know how to do it. And if you didn't know how to do it for the test, that's too bad. But you're still going to have to figure out how to do it. And it's that little trick, subtract backwards. So I'm going to do Q minus P. So it's negative 1 minus 3 and 5 minus negative 2, 5 plus 2. And that's like the Y2 minus Y1, isn't it? Like it's the same kind of idea. And this works out to negative 4, 7. So there's my direction vector. If I wanted to graph my direction vector, uh, negative 4 and 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Looks parallel, although my line's a little wobbly. <laughs> but looks parallel enough, I would say. And again, this got, so we don't need to go through the whole, all the steps of showing that, but this did come from like vector O, P, actually I should do it like this, O, Q, minus O, P, where O, Q is, uh, was this vector, and O, P was this vector, and then I found the direction vector, but in this form, it's tail, is at the origin, right? And then we're supposed to write the equation, which looks like this. Our position vector plus t times our direction vector.
Questions, questions, questions. Okay, what other what are some other things that we might want to do or might be asked to do? Something we did in grade nine was determine if a point is on the line. How did you do that in grade nine? Probably sub it into the equation, left side, right side, check, and see if they're balanced. That's how we would have done it in grade nine, using the like standard form or y equals mx plus b form or something like that, I think. How do we do that in grade 12? When we're not talking scalar. We're going to use one of the, we don't actually have a name for it yet, but we're going to use one of the other forms of the equation of a line. Okay, so I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to break it up into its x part and its y part. So the x will equal 3 minus 4 times t. If I put t in here to, to change it to anything, it would be t times negative 4, and I would add that to 3. That would give me my x. What would my y be? My y would be negative 2 uh, plus 7t. And then I sub in negative 4 for x and 10 for y. Okay, let's see what we get. So negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Divide both sides by negative 4, and I get t is 7 over 4. Add 2. Divide by 7. What happened? How do I interpret this? Remember, the question we are being asked, is the point on the line? So what does this mean? What do you think? So what would have to be true for the point to be on the line is you'd have to get the same t for both. Because let's say I got 2. Let's say I got t equals 2 for both. That means if I plugged t in, I would get those x and y values. But I got different t's. So the point is not on the line. So t is inconsistent. Oops. Therefore, the point negative 4, 10 is not on the line. Okay, what if we wanted to find a point that was on the line? Well, pick any value for t and plug it in. So what if I picked t is 7 over 4? Then I get x, y equals 3, negative 2, plus 7 over 4 times negative 4, 7. And I can do some of the other stuff that we did in the previous unit, right? So this is going to be plus, that looks like negative 7, and 49 over 4. I wouldn't normally pick a fraction, don't get me wrong. I just did it because let's see what happens. Let's see what the other, like the y coordinate should have been, I suppose, that goes with that one. So that's the only reason why I chose this. If you were asked to do this, you would pick an easy number like 2, right, or 10. Uh, and then I'm going to actually add these together. So this looks like negative 4, which is what we expected. And what is 49 over 4 minus 2? I think that should be, whoops. 41 over 4, shouldn't it? But that's not a point. That is a vector. And much like on your test, if you were asked for a vector and you gave a point, or if you were asked for a point and you gave a vector, the answer that you gave is wrong. So it's kind of an important idea. So be careful of that. Make sure if you're asked for a point that you give a point. Any questions about that? Yeah? 
Over four, yeah, thanks, sorry. Better. And that brings us to what we call parametric equations of lines in two space. Now, this is a big idea too, sort of related to vectors, just because we can go between vector form and parametric form is, I guess, something that we would often do. And parametric form is a really useful way of writing things that scales up nicely, that you can do um, other things in parametric form that you can't do in the old grade 9 form that we used to work in. We need these other ways like vector forms and parametric forms because the y equals mx plus b doesn't work when we start getting into other uh, more complicated systems. Okay, But vector equations scale up nicely and parametric equations scale up nicely. So these are two that you see a lot of you know, as math gets more complex. And basically what we did here is break it up into its parametric form, parametric equations for the... Uh, or parametric parts of the equation for that line to be able to solve for t whether it was consistent or not. Okay, as a parametric equation, and often it would look like this line and has a brace bracket like that, where again you've broken it up into its x parts as one equation and its y parts as a separate equation. So you've got multiple equations that are make that together make up the equation of one line but the x parts separated from the y parts. Does that make sense? And this is the same t, and you recognize m1 and m2 comes from the direction vector in vector form, so that's all related. And x0, y0 was the position vector, right? Does that make sense? So, that, so we've got the old grade 9 version, which we call scalar. We're going to talk more about that tomorrow. We've got vector form now. And now we've also got parametric form. And there's one more that we'll talk about tomorrow. So what can we do with parametric form? Given the par And this is the kinds of things that we're going to do. We're going to give it to you in one form, and you do something, switch it to another form, or answer questions in a different form, or something like that. This is a little weird. I think this is a sort of a typo. I'm sure some people do it this way. I usually use a colon, just because I think it looks weird having equal signs all over the place. But anyway, it's not so much that it's wrong, but. Generally speaking, I don't use equals there. Okay, so given this parametric equation of line one, write the vector equation. How are we going to do that? I think this is something you should already be able to do. Does anybody want to do it for us? Go ahead, Zach. So vector, right? Good. Yep. Good. So the negative 2, 4 came from the, this part here, and the 3, 5 came from this part here, where that was your position vector and that was your direction vector. Make sense? Easy enough? Find two other points on the line. So you can you go ahead and pick your own, whatever you want to do. I'm not going to make it complicated with fractions this time. I'm going to pick two easy ones. How about negative 1 and 10? But you can do whatever you want. And for one of them, I'm going to do the vector. So minus 1 times the direction vector. And for the other one, I will use parametric form. Parametric form is not the best for like doing work like that. Don't you agree? It's kind of awkward. Like one step doesn't flow. So generally speaking, you wouldn't choose this form if you had multiple forms. 
in order to find a point, I don't think. But just to demonstrate what it would look like or that how it could work. Makes sense. Any questions? We were asked to find two points. We haven't find we haven't stated a single point yet. So again, remember, if you're asked for points, make sure you turn them into points. Okay, good enough. Determine if line two, L2, which is given in parametric form, is parallel, perpendicular, or neither to line one. How are we going to do this? Again, this is something that you do in grade nine. In fact, my grade nines are just wrapping up this unit where they're talking about parallel and perpendicular. And in um, grade nine, when you're asked about parallel and perpendicular, what is that referring to? Anybody remember? What's, that, what's this really asking you about? Yeah, about slope, right? Like two lines, if two lines are parallel or perpendicular, is going to have something to do with the slope of each of those lines. But we're not talking that anymore. We're not finding slope. We want to do this in, in with vectors. So how am I going to do it with vectors? So something to do with the dot product. I think that's a good start. Don't you agree? Something to do with the dot product. Or sorry, something to do with direction vector. And you said dot product. What would the dot product tell us? If the dot product is zero, they're perpendicular. What if the dot product isn't zero? They're not perpendicular, but what else could I do? Yeah, so if they're parallel, then the cross product would be zero. In fact, we don't have to do the cross product. There's maybe an easier way. But you could, if your numbers were, were nasty, that would be a way to do it. So you could check the dot product, check the cross product. But, but what, are we, what are we dotting? I think we kind of already mentioned it, but the two direction vectors, right? So we need to have them. Do we already have, I th believe we already have D1. It was 3, 5. So direction vector 2, I'm going to pull out of the equation, negative 5, 3, right? Pulled it out of the parametric equation. And you can, you can kind of, by inspection, see what's happening. Depending on how the question is worded, you may have to, you may not just be able to say, well, I can tell by looking at them. First of all, we're going to want you to actually show it. So, you know, take the dot product or something like that. Um, in terms of whether or not they're parallel or collinear, the other thing about that is one would be a scalar multiple of the other, right? D the direction vectors. So I can say that. The, there is no K. Such that uh, direction vector 1 equals K times direction vector 2. Therefore, not parallel or collinear. And if we took the cross product, we wouldn't get the zero vector, I guess. So then we can do d1 dot d2. Negative 15 plus 15, which is 0. Therefore, line 1 is perpendicular to line 2. Don't say the direction vectors are perpendicular. The lines are perpendicular. Or orthogonal or whatever. That makes sense? Doable, right? So I know you can tell by inspection what's happening. But so if if it was parallel, you could you could instead of doing the cross product and showing zero, you could do that too. But instead of doing that, you could 
like find the k value. Show how if I take one and multiply it by two, I get the other. Like you could do that. That would be fine. Okay, that would be a good enough proof to show that they're parallel, that one is a scalar multiple of the other, or the scalar multiples of each other. Or you wouldn't have to necessarily do both, depending on how the question is worded. Or show the dot product. So show something. Okay, what about writing the equation of L1 in standard form? So again, this is just um, review from grade nine. How do you find the equation? Well, you need slope at a point. We don't have the slope. How do we find slope? Because what we're trying to do is find ax plus by plus c equals zero. We're going to use slope equals, say it again, y2 minus y1 is usually how we call it. Yeah, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We actually have to find the slope. But what, what points would we use? Well, how about those two points we found earlier in the question? Does that make sense? So that looks like 54 plus 1 over 28 minus 5. No, plus 5, which is 55 over 33 or 5 over 3. And again, you can pick either point, just like we did when we were working with the vector equations. And now we're going to use this formula, y minus y1. Again, this is something that we've done recently, so hopefully putting it in standard form is familiar. And what was that point again? Negative 5, negative 1. Standard form, you got to get rid of all fractions. And set it equal to zero. Any questions? So you're only going to do some of the questions from the worksheet. The rest of the worksheet will be tomorrow's practice. So we talked about the vector e form of an equation of a line, the parametric form, a little bit of review of we call this scalar form. We'll talk about that and define it tomorrow. But now that we're comparing it to other forms, this one would be called scalar. And it's in standard form. But you know, y equals mx plus b is also scalar, just a different form of scalar. Um, and we'll learn one other new one as well tomorrow.